my name's Ernest Rodka. Um, I'm 76 and um, I'm a cabinet maker. What was your background before you got really involved in campaigning against nuclear weapons? I'd, I, had, uh, bec I had been a conscience objector. I came to the decision that I was um, uh, not wanting to go into the army. I was against the army, against the militarism, and and I I objected on the basis of nuclear weapons. I mean, I objected on the basis that the British army was now dependent on nuclear weapons. But that was my sort of political initiation, really, was becoming a conscientious objector on nuclear grounds and winning my case. How are the views of the general public different back in the 60s in relation to nuclear weapons? I think in those days um, there was much more of a fear about a nuclear holocaust uh, than, than there is now. I think it, it's difficult probably for someone now to sort of realise the, the, um, the fear that there was with many people with uh, all this business about nuclear shelters and you know if, the, if there was a threat of nuclear, uh, nuclear war you go into your house and you take the windows and, and there were all these sort of activities going on from the state, from the government, that was frightening people. I mean, a lot of people were frightened and and um, uh, I suppose we were picking up on that and, and wanting to challenge what was being done in our name that we didn't agree with. How did you first start getting involved in anti-nuclear activism? I'd been involved in quite a few different things uh, on a, an experimental level and um, CND and nuclear disarmament was coming up as a big issue and I went to the first meeting that took place at Central Hall and then um, Canon Collins who um, was being put up as, as one of the leaders of CND had said there's been a call to go to Downing Street um, if people want to go, why not, sort of thing. And that was in the days when there were no, well, there's no gate across Downing Street. You could just walk into Downing Street, remarkably. And there were quite a lot of people there. And um, I can't remember now whether they were knocking on the door of 10 Downing Street, but suddenly, you know, the police were there trying to sort of defend the street against quite a, a, quite a large number of people who'd left Central Hall. And I saw someone being beaten up by the police and um, I um, intervened. I mean, I tipped a policeman's helmet off, which is probably not the most sensible thing to do. And I was set upon then by a whole group of police. I was quite roughly treated and um, uh, that was really my first experience of, of the law. And I suppose that politicised me. That one event did politicise me quite uh, dramatically, really. So after CND, you were also involved in a group called the Committee of 100, which organised some really big demonstrations. Could you tell us a bit about your involvement with them? Um, I mean, really almost quite soon after it organised the first demonstration in Whitehall, there was a big one being organised in Trafalgar Square, and, and about 30 of us were arrested and charged with um, organising a demonstration which had been declared illegal. Um, they brought in a ban against assembly and we were taken to court and sentenced to three months in prison and when and, and I mean I remember it as you know being a hugely dramatic event because on the day of the demonstration thousands of people came to Trafalgar Square and um, sat down in Trafalgar Square and stayed uh, you know, till the early hours of the morning, and I think a thousand people were arrested. I'm, I can't remember exactly, but a very large number of people were arrested. I mean, that was, you know, had a huge amount of press coverage all around the world and was on television, and I remember watching it in prison and being, you know, it was a hugely exhilarating uh, moment to see all these people who were challenging um, the authority when we were in prison for organising it. What sort of effect do you think you had, generally, um, through your activism? What it did was it politicised a whole generation of people, which is important. Um, it raised the whole issue of nuclear armaments and, and weapons of mass destruction. And I think it, it gave people individual uh, sort of... Um, um, confidence in themselves really in, in taking those actions and standing up and being prepared to put their name down I think from that point of view it was important and, and a lot of those people carried on being politically active you know. 
and what do you think about Trident today? That given the sort of economic situation that we have today, getting rid of Trident would make a huge amount of sense. I don't know what the figures now are, but it's going to be hugely more expensive and involve vast sums of money, which yes. could be used in uh, very well in in uh, creating a better situation for people in this country, you know, for use in other areas, job creation and um, social uh, social projects and such like.